your routine works for you. You don't work for it. Um, be flexible and be willing to let it change every year. It changes every year. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with Ab and Ella. Hi, Abby. Hey, how's it going? Good. It's so glad to have you back Good. again. I love being here. I know. I love you being here. So you know what's so funny? Okay, mm-hmm. if people watch the videos um, of the podcast, because a lot of people watch these on YouTube. Do they? Yeah. Yes, it's so fun. I'm actually learning that more and more people are watching. Uh, huh. But I mean, we have obviously our biggest audience is those who listen to the podcast. Right. I'm a listener be- for podcasts. I'm a listener because I, I can listen and do laundry and do dishes and do things like that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people choose to watch the actual huh. videos and they will see just because, you know, we like to be real. They will see that we are wearing the same exact clothes <laughs> that we were wearing in the last podcast. And it's not because we put on the same exact outfits. It's because we're just recording them back to back. Oh my goodness. That's funny. I never thought about that. Should we change our shirts between so that we look like we recorded? Maybe. Maybe. Next time. Next time I'm going to like put on a jacket. So it looks like I had a whole wardrobe change. Like you had a whole week go by. Yes. A whole week. (laughs) I'm a listener for sure. But sometimes I'll look people up because I'm like, I want to know what they look like. Does their voice match their so right. maybe that's why people watch. I want to know why people watch as opposed to listen. I don't know. I don't know, but it's fun. I love that people do both. So yes, we are wearing the same clothes and it's because True. we are all about efficiency because we yeah. are homeschool moms. And if you knew the time that it takes to set up <laughs> and get the two of us actually rolling and recording. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's yep. comical. It is. So, so we have to knock them out when we can, when we can. Yes, yes, but it's super fun, and we love the different topics that we get to talk about. And so today we are doing another Q and A, which is one of our favorite things to do. We absolutely love getting questions from you, our listeners, and typically that's where we get our questions from. Sometimes I will come across questions that people are asking on. Typically, it's Facebook. Actually, it's always Facebook because even though I have an Instagram, I don't really even know how to use it. Um, (laughs) So (laughs) usually they come from from Facebook and I'll see people post on different um, pages and sometimes they're on some of the like smaller private pages that I have. Um, And so oftentimes I'll take questions from there because it's a question that people ask over and over and over and over again and we see them everywhere. So, um, but these first few that we have today are from... Um, listeners from you, our audience. And so it's really exciting to get to answer these. So I'm just going to kind of jump into these and then we are going to um, answer them as best as we can. <laughs> um, so this first one is from Shelly. And I'm so excited that I got to hear from Shelly. I love it again when we hear from people. Um, and this is what Shelly said. She said, hi, I have so enjoyed listening to your podcast. Thank you, Shelly. We enjoy you listening to it. We are in our third year of homeschooling and we've homeschooled from the beginning. We're in a great community of home, uh, for homeschoolers with so many homeschool opportunities. Our kids have gone to an amazing drop-off co-op at our church two days a week. We have an upcoming move to a smaller town where there are not a lot of homeschool opportunities and I'm freaking out. The thought of going from all the fun group activities we enjoy now to starting over and in an area not as supportive of homeschooling has me in tears. Any words of encouragement or advice for starting over when you love your current homeschool life? And um, I love this question, Shelly. I, I hear your heart with this. And I, I we, we have been in this situation many times. Um, well, I won't say many times, a few times now as a family. We were in California. We were part of an amazing homeschool community there loved our homeschool community. And I I mean, they were, they were family to us. Mm -hmm. We all just had such a great relationship with one another. We, we did life together. It was, it was fantastic. And then we left and we went to a town where we didn't know a single person who homeschooled and we had to kind of start over. And it was really, really, really hard for us to do that. It was a sounds like probably a bigger community than what you're going to. Um, but it's scary. It is scary when you don't know anybody and you don't know how you're going to be accepted. You don't know what other people's thoughts are on homeschooling. You don't ha- know if it's going to be awkward to take your kids out to the grocery store on a Wednesday afternoon because all the other kids are in school and not very many people homeschool. Um, you know, I think we often think that, well, everybody homeschools now and it's normal everywhere, but it's, 
It's not. I mean, there are some towns in this country still where people are like, homeschool, what's that? Mm -hmm. And um, so everyone kind of knows, but it's definitely more prevalent in some areas than in others. So so I feel your pain in this. And then we, as um, we talked about recently, our family just moved from Georgia to Oklahoma to a town where we don't, again, we didn't know a single person. And so one of the things that I did was I just found through researching, I found the local homeschool Facebook page and, and I'm not advocating for Facebook. Um, I don't typically advocate for them, but for this purpose, it has really been a huge blessing to our family. I found the local homeschool Facebook page and I just went on there and literally I just threw it out there and I just said, our family's moving to town. We don't know anybody. Please help us. Like what, what co-ops are available? What opportunities do you have for homeschoolers? Please just give me all the information you can. And it was like drinking from a fire hose because mm-hmm. there was a lot where we moved to. Um, they have a fantastic homeschool community. Um, but you may be able to find something like that. If you can't find a local homeschool Facebook page, maybe go on one of the bigger homeschool Facebook pages like hip homeschool moms or Christian homeschool families, or if by chance you're part of a classical conversations group, that would be a fantastic place Mm -hmm. to connect with people or even get involved in a um, CC community. Your state org should actually, your uh, most state organizations, yep. if you get on where, whatever state you're in, they, a lot of them have a drop down of local and the HSLDA, yep. they just change, they, they're just doing some new things where you can look up groups by zip code, by mm-hmm. different, they, they're just changing this. So you might have to wait, but they're kind of finding a better way for to f- help you find groups in your area. So those are two other yes. yeah. places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. That's actually how I found the co-op that we just joined last week was I went to the HSLDA website and I found, and you can search right now if they still have it up. I mean, I just did this, you know, maybe two months ago, Um, but I found the state and then I found the city in that state and it had a list of the different co-ops that, and those, that doesn't mean that those are all of the co-ops in that area, but mm-hmm. those are the ones that, that are somehow connected to HSLDA. They, they fall under the HSLDA umbrella. Um, and so that's how I found the one that we're part of. So do some research mm-hmm. and see if there's something, if there's not a co-op or some type of a group in your area, let me encourage you to be that person who might start a co-op. And Abby, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about this because I know that you have done this in your community. And um, pretty soon, actually, in the next few weeks, we're going to have a friend of mine on, um, actually, uh, soon. Uh, she, she, we, that one may even actually air before this one. Um, her name is Rochelle Nelson, and she is going to talk about how to start a co-op. And so mm-hmm. she has started uh, the co-op that we're part of here in Oklahoma. And um, And so we're going to talk about that, but Abby, I would love for you to kind of jump into this and talk about your, your, cause you are, this is you, you're in a very small community Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in Idaho and you have jumped into this whole co-op thing and really, really created community around your, yourself for yourself. Um, So talk about that. Well, first Shelly, I, my heart is like breaking for you because to have for you to have come from something so amazing and so solid. I mean, I'm sure it's just, it's gut wrenching and probably what, what your biggest concern is, is probably less for you and more for your kids that they're so used to all of that. And now you're worried that, but, um, let me just tell you, God cares. Like he cares about these tiniest little things. Um, he cares that you are concerned that your kids may not have the best of friends in the great community. And, but yet he's still obviously moving your family. Um, and so you just have to trust that his plan is better and whatever he's taking away from you, he's going to fill that with something better. And maybe it will just be a season where you aren't surrounded by community right away. And it could just be a great season for you and your family. Um, but we also know that community is important amongst homeschoolers. And so, you know, if you can find something that's amazing and awesome, but maybe just maybe, God has a plan for you to be that something. Mm-hmm. Um, and depending on what you come from, you know, we we live in an area where we have a lot of, we call them California refugees. <laughs> 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 um, that's actually what they're known as here. They're, they're coming from California to, uh, well, or all over, you know, but they're coming from these huge co-ops. Like, I mean, they're just, 
they're so active and they're coming to our little town where there's really not a lot. And so the first thing is you might have to change your expectations a little and say it might not look exactly like home, but it we can still have community. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you could start just reaching out to homeschoolers. It, don't be overwhelmed and say, oh my goodness, I have to start a five day a week class yeah. to have co-op. It might just be, hey, can, there, can we get some families together to go to the park twice a week, you know, or can we just do an art project afternoon? So don't feel like you're going from th that you have to reinvent whatever it is that you're coming from because you don't, you could start small. And, you know, where, where we were, we were in a situation where we had a, a small group going and the person was stepping down and they were looking for someone to step in. And I said, no, nope, not going to do it. No way. And God said, Actually, <laughs> actually, let me tell you the plan, Abby, um, as opposed to me telling him the plan. So I stepped into that role, but we just started small and we just did a field trip once a month and then a park day once a week. And, you know, from that, it has grown. And so you can make it what what is what you're able to make it. Do not mm -hmm. feel like you have to do something huge. But, you know, make sure you listen to the podcast about the the practicalities of starting a co-op, but just remember all co-ops look different. Right. Um, but you know, I, Shelly, I'm going to be praying for you because that is hard, but remember God will give your kids what they need for where they've called them. And so they may just have a handful of friends. It might just be a small group as opposed to a huge, but, but there's a reason that God is doing that. And there's a reason that you're there. So, um, but don't be afraid to start it. Just call some moms and say, you guys want to come over and play in the backyard. And that's how most groups start. They just start yeah. small and, and organically, and then you can grow it into, you know, right now we, one day a week, the older girls do a sewing class. We just have a mom that sews with them. The boys do a Lego class and then they're, the younger kids do a, a craft and it's nothing major. It doesn't take a ton of work. It doesn't take a ton of moms. Yeah. Um, and so it, it can be simple, but, but just remember that God cares. God God cares and he's going to bring you who he wants to bring you in the season that you're in. So hang in there, hang in there. Yep. We, um, years ago when Brooklyn was pretty little, I want to say she was in probably going into first or second grade. Um, I had had a group of other moms that we did a lot of homeschooling things together and, you know, we had, um, it wasn't really a co-op, but we just got together like once a week yeah. and just did mommy things. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, one of them moved out of state. Another one, um, put her kids back in school and another one, her husband started a church. And so she became a pastor's wife and, and just had some other, you know, priorities. And I remember feeling very lonely and I was in my own hometown, but it was weird because it was like, I had all these friends, but I didn't, um, I didn't have any deep connections. And so I prayed and I was like, Lord, you know what I need. You know what my kids need. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trust you for this. And as I prayed, the Lord started showing me people at our church who I just knew they homeschooled. Mm -hmm. I didn't know them personally at all. I just knew that they were homeschool families. And so I just put myself out there and I was like, hey, um, so I'm just going to start this kind of co-op-ish thing. It's not really a co-op, but we're just <laughs> I just want to get together with other moms and other kids right. once a week. And we all started getting together and, and um, some really amazing friendships have grown out of that. And what was really neat is that after, you know, a year or so of us getting together, actually after a few months of us getting together, every single one of those moms, there were, I think five of us total, every single one of them said, I was praying for the same thing. Oh. I was, I was really struggling. I really needed some friends to just walk this road with me. Mm -hmm. And I was praying for the same thing. And so you don't know how the Lord might use you and don't be afraid. Like Abby said, it doesn't have to be a co-op. It doesn't have to be anything super structured. It can be just getting together. Listen to the episode that we did with uh, Jenny Urich on 1000 Hours Outside and how she started this group of just getting kids outside together. And so um, so you can do this. And, and um, we will both be praying for you because this is a big transition. But as I have told my girls so many times through our uh, crazy few years of uh, this journey that the Lord has had us on, that there's no better place to be than in the center of God's will. Mm -hmm. And so wherever the Lord takes you, he has you there for a purpose and he knows 
your needs as a family. And he knows the needs of those people who are in that town. Mm -hmm. And he, if you are willing to say yes, again, go back and listen to the episode Abby and I did, um, on Mary. Um, that was our Christmas episode. And she was just a young girl who was willing to say yes. We did another one on Esther and how the Lord used her. She was just an ordinary girl and God used these two ordinary girls to literally change the course of, of life for us. Mm -hmm. And so God can use you, Shelly, in a really big way to impact his kingdom and just pray that the Lord would give you um, the wisdom to know what he's asking of you. Don't wait for someone to to invite you. You put yourself out there mm -hmm. and you go find your own tribe that you can be a blessing to. And it doesn't have to be day one, but uh, trust that the Lord will use you in that way. So uh, we're going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back. I think as parents, we assume that kids are going to just know the right way to do things. You have to teach them first and then train them by teaching them to do it over and over again until they actually get it. Imagine trying to teach your child how to tie his shoes without the practice principle. If the practice principle is vital for teaching such morally neutral tasks as mm -hmm. tying shoes, how much more important is it for training children in Christ-like character? I speak to parents all the time who come up to me and they see what's happening, but they don't know what to do. And I just want to stand up and say, you can do this. Here is a solution. This is Yvette Hampton, host of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Join us each week for a new episode as we offer encouragement and resources on biblical discipleship from popular speakers and authors, as well as parents just like you and me. Find out more at schoolhouserocked.com or listen anywhere you find your favorite podcast. We are back and uh, I loved answering that question for Shelly. Here's the next question. And Abby, I'm going to let you run with this one, sister. Um, this is from Allison. She said, please talk about routine. How do I figure one out? We need help. Um, <laughs> I am terrible at routine. I just am. I'm, I'm just not the type A person. And I'm just not good at, at routine, but Abby is really good at routine. <laughs> and that's why the Lord has brought us together. So I'm going to let Abby take this one. Well, first of all, the fact that you're asking for help and you want routine shows that you are the kind of mom that wants routine and kids do need routine. That's just, that is the truth. Kids need routine. Some of us are more scheduled and kind of the type A than others. So my routine is going to look different than yours and that's okay. We don't need to recreate each other's homes, but we do need to know that routine helps everybody in your house and whether it's a tight routine or a loose routine, um, it's going to help kids because they know what to expect. And the first thing about routine in homeschool is be willing to be flexible. Like don't, it's not in stone. Nothing is in stone, but um, I'll just share a little bit of what my daily routine looks like, but I, I get nervous to do that. And I don't like to do that because I'm afraid people will think, well, that's what my daily routine should look like. And I think it, a routine isn't really schedule because a schedule a schedule can be two in stone in stone. A routine mm -hmm. is more just a flow of your home and just a routine. It's, it's kind of how things go, but it leaves room for flexibility. But we sometimes have to remember as moms, first of all, I am very type A and I like routine, but guess what? Not every one of my kids does. And so we do need to be flexible and remember that it's not all about how I want to run it, you know, where some moms are very loose. They don't want a routine at all, but then they have kids that are sinking because they need a routine. So the other second thing when I like to talk about routines with moms is be aware that it's going to change. You know, when you have toddlers in the home and you're homeschooling older kids, your routine is going to look very different than when all of your kids are older. You're going to, you know, probably center your school. Everything's going to revolve around nap times, you know, and that's one of the first things I learned when I had littles and then was also homeschooling is capitalize on nap time. When those babies are sleeping, that's when you're schooling with the older kids. Um, but don't get so stuck in your routine that you are completely derailed. If things, you know, we're doing life. Homeschool is part of life. So mm -hmm. we have to be flexible, but, um, you know, so we don't have a time that we start. And, and a lot of families like to start at a certain time. We have more, like I said, a routine. I get the kids up. They do A, B, C, D. The first thing that every child starts with is just their own quiet time in the word. And I would say that that is important for every home because that's how we set up our day is everybody gets their own quiet time in the word. Um, 
Because then if everything falls apart after that moment, <laughs> they have at least gotten their time with the Lord. Um, and then we do breakfast. And, you know, one thing that we works in our house for routine is we do a lot of audiobooks during mealtime. And that works for us. Um, then I have some kids who can work very independently and they go do, we, well, we, then we group up as a group and we do Bible, we chalk, we pray for our morning. We kind of take care of the business stuff. What's going on that day? How does that look? So it's just a flow. I don't say at nine o'clock, this happens mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock. This happens. It's more, we do this when that's done, we do this. So we start our day that way. And then after we kind of group up as a, as a group, as a family, then kids go their separate way. My older kids do all their independent work, the things they can do by themselves. And it's during that time I can work with my youngest because she's not old enough yet to work independently. So that's another kind of tip is if you've got babies, work when they're sleeping. If you've got older kids that can work independently, use that time with your younger kids. Then my first grader is done because she doesn't have as much school. And then I can devote my time to helping the older kids with what they need, you know, um, so that's kind of how our morning work. Everybody does their independent work while I'm working with the younger one. Um, and then it's lunchtime. And then after lunch, we do everything else together. Our family does science together. We do history together. Um, we do those kind of subjects in the afternoon. It hasn't always looked that way. That's what it looks like this year because that's our, our thing. But what I do is I basically block out times of my day from breakfast to lunch. And these are the things we need to accomplish. I have met very few moms who can say at nine o'clock, this is what happens until nine 20. And from nine 20 to nine 40, this happens. And I don't know what kind of children they have, right? but I don't see how that can work because inevitably somebody's going to have to go to the bathroom and they're going to take longer than you really would have expected. Or, you know, so just chunk out your day, you know, here is before breakfast, what we do here is between breakfast and lunch, what we do here is between lunch and two, you know, and so do your day in chunks. And that, that is a good flow. And then you can fit other things in there. So your routine works for you. You don't work for it. Um, be flexible and be willing to let it change every year. It changes every year. Um, at the beginning of every school year, I write it out and I ch chunk it up and I put it on the fridge. And by week two, we just kind of have that routine and we take it off the fridge, throw it away. And we just, we kind of flow. Yeah. So that'd probably be the best thing. That yeah. I could say, but it helps your kids know what to expect. And that's what's important about routine is kids want to know what to expect. My daughter wants to know when I am done with my independent work, what should I do? And it helps me to know they're not just standing around waiting for me right. and they're interrupting me a hundred times when I'm working with my younger. They, they know what's next and what to expect. Yes. Yep. Yep. I love that. And, you know, uh, someone who has a really good take on this is Pam Barnhill. I mean, she's yeah. excellent when it comes to scheduling yeah. routines and things like yeah. that. Um, she actually does also, it's called loop scheduling. And I love mm -hmm. her loop scheduling because that if you haven't checked out loop scheduling, you go on her website and look at it, but she basically will take a all, she takes all of her main subjects. So she does her morning basket time, but then she takes her main subjects and, you know, you've got history and science and literature, you know, maybe those three. Well, maybe not every you you're, you may not get to all of those things every single day and so you just kind of prioritize what you're going to do um depending on the schedule so if monday you get to history but you don't get to science then tuesday you do science right and then as opposed to saying like on monday we do lesson 142 right. on tuesday we do lesson 143 it basically you're doing the next thing right. and whenever the next thing happens it happens so if all of a sudden on tuesday you get a phone call and you can get into the doctor's office you don't have to go oh no what am i going to do with everything we had scheduled tuesday you just do the next thing on wednesday right and and it takes off the stress it takes off the pressure loop scheduling it it really helps it's basically the difference between a routine and a yeah. schedule. They should call it loop routining. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, yeah. and Pam Barnhill goes into that a lot. It's fabulous. And the longer you homeschool, the more you will figure out your family's groove. You'll figure out, you know, some families don't start like, like the Hamptons yeah. start much later in the day um, because that's just how their family rolls. Our right. family, you know, I'm up at five, we're starting it. And it just, you learn how your family works. So when you look at other people's schedules, whatever you do, do not recreate their schedule. Find your routine that works best for your family. And 
talk to your husband because one thing that is very important in our family, part of our family routine is I don't care where we're at in school. When dad walks in the door, we're done. And now that my kids are a little older and I'm a middle schooler, it's like, well, you didn't get that done. You're going to have to do it, you know, later. But really, it family time is more important than yeah. the school part. So when dad gets home, we put the books away. And that that's part of our routine. Um, it doesn't need to be like that in every family. But you'll you'll find your groove. Yep. And then it'll change on you. Right. <laughs> and, and don't don't be a slave to it. You know, there's so much nope. freedom in homeschooling. Do not become a slave to your schedule or to your routine. Mm -hmm. You do yep. what works best for your family, yep. um, for your personality, for your kids' personalities, yep. um, for your husband's work schedule. You know, Abby says we're a late family. Well, that's because my husband has always had a schedule where he's gotten home really late at night. And so we stay up late so that he can spend time with the family. So therefore we wake up later than most people wake up and we just start our day later. I'm not up at five in the morning. I don't wake up till like seven 30 or eight in the morning. And so uh, everything you know, just shifts, everything you, just shifts, but it's the yep. beauty of homeschooling. You know, we get exactly. to make that work for our family. Right. So um, we are out of time. We will be back again on Wednesday to answer a few more questions. Thank you guys again for sending these in. Continue to send them. If you have a question you would like us to answer, um, you can email us at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. And we would love to encourage you in whatever way we can. Also, let us know if there are guests that you would like us to have on the podcast or just specific topics that you would like us to discuss. And um, we will do our best to encourage you in any way we can. So thank you. Have a fantastic day. We will see you back here on Wednesday. Bye.